Hello Caymanians, friends and well-wishers. The Cayman Islands is once again at a crossroads. On May the 24th, 2017, just a few days to go, you will go to the polls to vote for a change for a new government that will create hope and opportunity for you and your family. For a government that will restore faith in our small business sector, for a government that will protect our financial services industry and put our economy on a sustainable platform for development. Your choice in this election is absolutely clear. It is between the last four years of PPM mismanagement and broken promises and a new beginning of hope, of opportunity, and for prosperity for all, not just a few, but for all. The Cayman Democratic Party represents that change which you seek today. For the last four years, you have endured the empty promises on job creation, reducing the cost of living, rebuilding the economy, providing more opportunities for small businesses, and improving the lives of every citizen. All promises broken. In 2013, they promised a strong economy which would give people jobs and a business environment that would provide opportunities to earn money and to lead to happiness and productive lives. My fellow Caymanians, where have that taken place? Not on these islands. Instead, the government has pursued policies that have weakened our economy and made it more difficult for ordinary Caymanians to survive. A number of businesses continue to struggle under bureaucratic red tape. They have signed deals that threaten the very foundation of our financial industry and our economy. Our people are losing their homes and unemployment and crime have increased. We believe that a balance can be had on an immigration policy which ensures Caymanians can have more jobs, not now available, and companies be allowed to have the requisite number of permits they need to operate in our kind of jurisdiction. If this balance is not struck, in the end, it will be our people, you, who suffer the consequences, and we intend to strike that balance on immigration policy matters. The PPM sold us down the river without a paddle when they signed the Beneficial Ownership Agreement. This agreement has been a disaster. Businesses are already facing difficulties with an extraordinary amount of red tape, which is choking off the vibrancy of our financial industry. There is no country in this world that has done this and exposed their business owners' accounts, bank accounts, to open attack from hackers. And we now have a system that does not work for anyone. Some of our banks, which have operated here for years, are experiencing more and more pressures because of this agreement, which the PPM secretly signed and initially denied but had to admit it when we forced them to do so. Our constitutional right to privacy is being trampled upon with the existence of this agreement, which would allow wanton, unregulated, and unauthorized access to private information. We intend to have discussions with the United Kingdom immediately about being elected to renegotiate a new agreement. We are already facing the tremors from the agreement on our financial services industry. And if not changed, we believe more and more Caymanians are going to lose their jobs and businesses will move to other safer jurisdictions. In 2013, they promised crime prevention solutions to stem the scourge of crime and to refurbish sections of northward to rehabilitate prisoners with life skills before leaving prison. They said that they would create proper facilities to administer justice in the Cayman Islands, introduce mediation and tribunal services, and address 
the needs of third party courthouse users, that is jurors, counsel, other government agencies, members of the public, and most importantly, victims and witnesses. My fellow Caymanians, where have those things taken place? Not on these islands. Crime has gone through the roof with weekly occurrences of serious offenses, including robbery at gunpoint. Crime, including the trafficking of drugs, human trafficking, illegal immigration, and weapon smuggling, threatened the islands in many ways. We believe that there are solutions, and we must strategize for the Cayman Islands to become the host country of a joint law enforcement operation, jointly with the governments of the United Kingdom, the United States, and other Caribbean nations. Once a joint operation is formed, headquartered in the Cayman Islands, law enforcement personnel and equipment, including a full deployment of marine and air surveillance, would operate from the Cayman Islands and would involve the United States Coast Guard, the Drug Enforcement Agency and Customs and Border Patrol, all components of the Department of Homeland Security. We have already had some high-level discussions and plans made with some U.S. officials. We will work with the United States Southern Command, which includes this region. It is quite obvious that the present government cannot deal with the crime as existing. We therefore will not mess around the issue and stop it with the strategy I have just mentioned. Now that the United Kingdom is departing the European Union, it will embrace even more its excellent relationship with the United States, which would include supporting the concept of a command-based joint law enforcement operation, helpful to the Cayman Islands and the region, and based here, but also consistent with the United States' concerns regarding these same crimes. We must stop the crime. In 2013, they promised to create an educated society through the implementation of their education plan of action, which was focused on literacy, numeracy, technical and vocational training, special needs and disabilities, science and behavior. Like many of you, we are still looking for these initiatives because after four years of the PPM government, our education system is still in need of major investment and transformation. And four years, buildings are still incomplete and our children are failing and falling behind in global standards. I can assure you tonight that a new CDP government will make the necessary investment in education infrastructure to create the right environment for proper learning. And we will invest in teacher training, get the best available teacher skills in our classrooms, and we will fast track and expand technical and vocational skills opportunities by utilizing existing infrastructure instead of looking for new buildings, a new construction of new buildings. We will also continue to promote other educational initiatives to ensure that our schools are properly equipped and are staffed with well-trained and well-paid, caring teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, Caymanian children must be given quality education to compete in the new global the new globalized environment. We must give them that chance by providing them with the most appropriate technological tools available for learning. Let me now turn to the matter of housing. Far too many hardworking Caymanians are struggling to maintain their homes. Indeed, many are losing their homes because of difficulties complying with their mortgage obligations after losing their jobs. Imagine, after so many years of personal investment in the creation of your home, one day, all of a sudden, 
you are forced out because you are unemployed and things turned difficult. A situation aided, of course, by the wicked policies of the present government. This, my friends, is the reality out there. People are being put out of their homes. We will reinstate a mortgage assistance program to provide immediate assistance to as many homeowners as possible to save their homes from foreclosures. You see, we built 97 houses because we cared. The PPM built none. A CDP government will develop, together with the private sector, appropriate financing mechanisms and provide access to affordable housing to low and modest income families. My friends, we have also witnessed the deterioration in our health care services. People are finding it hard to pay for hospitalization. Some people get none. Some people get no treatment and aftercare because of the policies of the PPM government over the last four years. They made promises which they did not keep, and as a result, the health system has fallen into disrepair. There is a serious crisis developing with children with autism and other special needs. The families alone cannot care for these children. They require specialized care, and we are going to create the environment to assist families caring for special needs children. The CDP is committed to the continuous improvement in the quality and delivery of adequate health services in the Cayman Islands. We are committed to a plan for affordable health insurance, which can generate savings to you of between 15 to 20 percent below what now prevails in the industry. We believe we can cut down the healthcare liability by up to 30 percent in the next three years. If we make these kind of important changes to healthcare costs, as I understand it, there are managed care insurance plans available that can do just that while maintaining high standards of care and aftercare treatment. The managed models have been effective, and if they can do the job in reducing the cost of health care services, then let us explore the options. But our people must be given proper health care services at a better rate. A CDP government will ensure that our hospitals and medical institutions are reorganized adequately, maintained, equipped, and staffed, and that basic medical supplies are available for the care and treatment of patients. In the last four years, we have seen the quality of life of the elderly deteriorate, and many can no longer live off government subvention or assistance. We must increase, and we will, the benefit to the elderly, our veterans and seamen, to $1,000 per month. We intend to develop and maintain a package of poverty alleviation and social protection measures to cushion the negative impact of the cost of living and reduce the incidence of poverty on the aged, the disabled, and other persons in need. We are committed to reviewing the Cayman Islands Disabilities Act to ensure that there is adequate legislative support for the protection of the rights of disabled residents. As a small society where everyone is connected by friendship or family, we have to show a higher degree of compassion and care for one another. Keman is lagging behind in this digital age. We have to play catch up and do so quickly. We will make every attempt to advance Cayman as a digital society through information communication technology and pursue the development of ICT as an integral part of the economy. This will improve the efficiency and accessibility of government as people seek better services, delivery from government's agencies and its departments. 
the IT, ICT sector will be developed as a knowledge-based export service sector that will provide jobs for Caymanians and improve the economic wealth of the nation, reduce poverty, and create a sustained economic base for national development. When the PPM came to power in 2013, the foundations of the economy were well positioned because of the actions taken by the government I led during the immediately preceding difficult years, especially through the global financial crisis. When financial markets in other jurisdictions were falling, the Cayman Islands were experiencing recovery because of our bold actions. We took quick actions to save our financial sector. After four years of the PPM and their misguided policies, we see a need for a well-thought-out and realistic long-term plan for the sustainable economic development of the Cayman Islands. This plan would incorporate appropriate environmental protection mechanisms while providing an improved standard of living for all Caymanians. We will continue to invest in critical infrastructure projects, such as the redevelopment and expansion of new port facilities, the road network, schools, recreational and other public facilities. Looking to the future, my fellow Caymanians, we have to look over the horizon to the future and be innovative. The Cayman waters, for example, are ideal for the farming of fish, oysters, and other seafoods. Aqua farming prospers in many parts of the world, and there is no reason why aqua farming should not be pursued here to generate employment. We will explore the potential of aqua farming as part of a deliberate strategy to diversify the foundations of our economy. We would invite successful entrepreneurs to the Cayman Islands to partner with local interests to carry out such investments. The results of such partnership would include employment as well as income for the islands through permitting and licensing and leasing fees. For these islands to prosper once more and to have everyone benefiting, strong leadership with experience is required. The Cayman Democratic Party offers this kind of leadership. We have 11, 11 of the best available talents running in this election and experience they have to represent the people in the assembly. And you will entrust us, I hope, with your important vote. We are ready to take on the challenges once again and work for the betterment of the people of these islands. We will take care of our youth of our elderly, our businessmen and women, and bring prosperity to you, the people. The CDP has always been a party for the people, inclusive, and we will continue to implement policies and strategies to improve the standard of living for you and your families. We have had high-level discussion with US officials on the issue of United States visas and our people traveling to other countries to obtain U.S. visas. This must become a thing of the past. The scope of services offered by the presence of the United States State Department here must be expanded here to include the issuance of visa and preclearance to the United States. We know this is possible, and we have had relevant discussions on these matters already. I encourage you to examine the details contained in our manifesto and the commitments we have given to undertake a realistic, meaningful, and sustainable job creation program using existence resources, the restoration of the health services sector to a path of sustainable and affordable health care, a new focus on education, measures aimed at crime reduction, the provisions of more efficient social services at the local community levels, a community development plan designed to positively assist their families. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Caymanians, friends, and well-wishers, the future of the Cayman Islands is in your hands. For the first time, 
we will be electing members to the Legislative Assembly by a one-man, one-vote process. And therefore, careful thought is required in who you choose to represent you in the new Assembly. On Election Day, I encourage you to vote for the Cayman Democratic Party's candidate in your constituency and tell your neighbors to do the same. Caymanians, tomorrow must be better than today. Vote Cayman Democratic Party. May God bless you, your families, and the entire Cayman Islands.